Another year, another Call of Duty game in the horizon. My hopes of a good COD has shrunk smaller than EA standards for a Madden game. So like always, I jump headfirst into the new Call of Duty and give the masses my honest opinion of what I think of the newest installment. Now let me be clear, since this is only a beta, I will give my impressions of what I think so far. In my full review of the game, whether it's complete trash or not, I will also include the campaign and zombies. But since this is only multiplayer, I will give you my honest opinion of what I liked and what I hated. Does Call of Duty Black Ops 6 change the momentum in the last COD games from being complete cash grabs to actually being worth the purchase? Is there hope for Game Pass Call of Duty? Let's break out the sweat towels, fly around using Omni Movement, and swan dive right into this. So I feel like I gotta start with what I like. And one of the biggest things that I feel like most people always worried about with Call of Duty Black Ops is the speed. And I'm not talking about the drugs, I'm talking about the actual movement of the gameplay. Omni Movement is something that most people were excited about. Not because it looks cool, to constantly jog from left to right like you're playing a soccer game it means it's fast and sometimes it gets even sweaty fast people always like to move around like you're sprinting non-stop and with the inclusion of swan dives and super slides i mean damn it's it's getting fast as one of those aging gamers i kind of get a little nervous seeing this non-stop movement type of gameplay people always adore the games like Titanfall that have you flying across the map, no holds barred, like you're on coke or something. But I'm not going to be one of those gamers. So when I saw Omni Movement, I really was nervous. But what if actually playing the game, it actually wasn't that bad. It's slower than Modern Warfare 3, which is already good, but it kind of reminds me of a faster version of COD Black Ops Cold War. Sure, I mean, I'm not going to say that it's a perfect gameplay loop, because there are times where I feel like I'm breaking out of sweat if I'm not snorting out some Cheeto dust. It feels different, and I feel like that's a good shift from what Activision has been known for for the last few years, just giving us expansions of old games that really have not shown much improvement. And I think the most important thing about Black Ops 6 is that the guns actually feel pretty good. The MX-4 and the SMGs are absolute lasers. And I, I am a fan of seeing marksman rifles actually be able to be good. And for those fans that love quickscoping, it's definitely bad. Me, I'm, I'm not necessarily a good quickscoper because I'm straight up trash at snipers in this game. But if you are a fan of quickscoping, then you're gonna love this game. SMGs like the MP7, or whatever the hell it's called in this game, are actually fun to use. Mainly because your movement's really fast, and it's straight up accurate. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the problems with this later on in the video, but I'm not gonna lie, it's actually fun to play most guns in this game. I never felt like one gun was just complete trash. The AK-47 is always strong, the M4 is always balanced, and even the marksman rifles make me actually enjoy using them. My only hope is that the M16 does make a comeback because that's my favorite gun in the entire COD series. And if they don't do it well, you already know I'm going to criticize it when the game releases. The kill time is very similar to Black Ops Cold War, which was solid. It means that it's not going to be an instant kill like it was in the original Modern Warfare reboot, but it's not going to be as archaic as it was in Modern Warfare 3. I like the fact that this is an arcade game. I'm not looking for the COD to be the super realistic gameplay like I always expect when playing games like Battlefield. There's a limit to the arcadeness and i'm actually a fan of the way this game plays and i think one of the most important things that Treyarch does with its guns is it actually gives me a lot of things to unlock i'm one of those people that like to grind for things in their guns i never liked the idea in the previous cod games where they just continue the progression of your guns for basically the entirety of your experience and never actually creating a prestige mode of any kind and sure we didn't get to experience this prestige mode but the idea is is that they're actually giving you a lot of ways to upgrade your guns without you having to just continue you unlock things like camos and all that bullshit that comes along with it. There are so many attachments that have a lot of change-ups to what your gun can feel or look like. And there's even perks that even increase the amount of attachments from having the basic five to all the way to eight, that which makes your guns feel so damn high tech. And there's actually some sort of a strategy that goes along with building your layout. Builds really are a game changer in this game. I mean, maybe I'm getting a little too hyped here, but I remember the days where you had to create a class and if you wanted to add that same gun to a different loadout, you basically had to copy and paste or have to remember what attachments you used. In Black Ops, you can create a custom loadout, which then can be carried onto any gun you use for that specific class. So essentially, you're building a bunch of different versions of the M4 or whatever gun you want to use, and you can copy and paste it anytime you want. And I feel like, yeah, maybe I'm getting excited with this small change, but for someone that likes to use similar loadouts and types of guns, I always forget what the hell I was using, so I had to depend on my memory and 
damn, half the time that's shot. You can actually strategize that if you want to use particular class sets, you can make your own build and then you just reuse them in different classes. And I think most important about this is that the more attachments that you have to unlock means that you actually have a reason to grind. In the past COD games, you had that garbage version of a progression system where you had to use a specific gun to then unlock the brother version of it in a different class. And I think that's just completely stupid. Like, yeah, I, I want to unlock a red dot sight, so I need to play the LMG version of this gun and then expect that I can unlock it later on. Why would I ever want to do that? Why can't I just play with the M4 and unlock all the attachments with it like any other normal FPS game? But instead, Activision wants to just do dumb things and make you get pissed off really easily. So I'm glad to see that Treyarch finally learned the lesson that most other COD games have never learned and just brought it back to the old system that I love. And lastly, the perk system in this game is honestly a breath of fresh air. I mean, perks are always fun to use. You get to customize your character which any way you want. And they actually do mirror a lot of the old version of the perks that we remember from the past. Scavenger always is a solid perk to earn. Picking up a lot of reloads or things you need for the, your gun to continue trying to get kills. Ghost is always essential when trying to avoid being spotted on the radar. Yeah, Hardline's not a perk, but they do have some substitutes that actually give you bonus points going closer to your score streaks. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There are some perks that are completely useless in this new system, but some of them are are obviously the classics, so I'm not going to be hateful against that. But I think one of the most important things they added in this game was the fact that you can add three perks of a similar color or build, and then it gives you actually a fourth perk that's a specialty that gives you added benefits. So if you added three perks of the same color, you can become a recon specialist, where all of a sudden now you can spot enemies through walls for the first three seconds of your life and give you insight on where they're going to be. Or you can be a salt specialty where you now get boost every time you get one to two kills. You're now all of a sudden become like the juggernaut running through people left and right. That's something that no COD has ever thought of. And I think that that's such a cool thing to add and surprise that nobody else has thought of that yet. I'm always a fan of customization and playing whatever way I want to. So now you're adding a way for me to change up my character and actually have fun with the game. I'm always a fan of that. And obviously with Call of Duty, there's a lot of things that I have to rag on. First off, the map design is one of the worst things I've seen in a while. Map design in this game gets me real nervous. And, and not just like a little bit, like hella nervous. They tried two sets of different maps for the first two weekends of this beta. And in complete honesty, more than half of them suck ass. Derelict is pretty solid at times, but at other times it makes you want to leap into upcoming traffic because once you get locked in the spawns, your life is straight up miserable. If I were to break down these maps like I was some sort of scientist to kind of give you the reasons why you should not like them, it's pretty clear as day. Derelict gives you that feel that you're in some hillbilly town with the train tracks off the rails. And yes, it is different than most cops maps i played but it feels like there's so many different ways for you to get attacked from the top of the train cars to underneath your crotch from the tree line and it just feels like there's no consistency and because there's so much movement going on it just feels like you have no idea where to look and what's worse is that these spawns are completely ass there were times where i was spawned right behind people in a hard point match and it made me feel bad for them when i had to clap them in their ass at the same time when i'm trying to defend a flag for some reason activision thinks that it's smart for them to spawn my enemy team right behind me because it feels like they just want to embarrass me in front of my entire stream then you get to the worst versions like scud which is basically a diet tasteless version of dome some people really like Dome, but those same people are most likely a low IQ person. Dome is one of those maps to just make you question whether or not you should be playing Call of Duty. And it feels like Scud is heading in the right direction if you really hate yourself. Like if you were to think of the top worst map in Call of Duty, Scud is going to match itself probably in the top three of all time. Probably mirroring the level of Santa Senna border crossing from Modern Warfare 2. I played every Call of Duty, including Ghost, and even Stonehaven would match as a better level than Scud. And I feel like I've gotten lost in Stonehaven at least every other game I played. There's way too many open spaces, the corridors make no sense, and the spawns are just complete ass. Yeah, sure, the desert feel makes you think that it's a really interesting place to play, but it's so damn condensed that it feels like every two seconds you're going to fight somebody 
without you even being able to breathe without having to fire your weapon. Skyline is easily the best map of the entire grouping that we got to play because not only is it unique being some sort of a hotel complex, but there's a lot of different ways you can tackle this map. Yes, playing this on a team deathmatch is 99% of the time way better than any other game mode. Whether you're playing this on hardpoint or domination, those matches can be extremely sweaty, but it's a pretty standard map compared to the other. Rewind sometimes can be cool, but 90% of the time, you're getting killed in the open ass area of this localized shopping market. Yeah, I think it's funny that they have things like Burger Town or a Blockbuster store in located directly in the map, but you have an entire street line that's open to get murked by anybody. And then the back alley that's open to get murked by anybody. So it feels like the only place you can really go without getting murked is inside the store. So it basically funnels everyone into one area and that doesn't feel like a good COD map. It feels like crap and Babylon, is honestly the equivalent of playing shipment on crack. Yes, playing this on Team Deathmatch is pretty wild, but I've learned that whenever I play on Babylon, the only strategy I have when playing this match is that I need to go full on loser mode. I need to equip the shotgun class that is OP and just have some fun. Throwing axes at people, shotgunning the crap out of everyone that attempts to get near me and just be that douchebag that no one likes if you think you're gonna go into babylon and just have a standard cod type of game then you're mistaken the only way to play babylon and have fun is you gotta be a loser and it feels like for some reason black ops 6 is trying to match the level of the worst maps of all time which is not a good award to have my hope is that for the remaining what nine maps that they can come up with something that's not crap because if you do use these maps and there are consistency, we're in for a bad surprise. I mean, there I've heard of things like three lane maps that are bad, but this is not only just three lane maps, but they're complete trash with spawns being unimaginably bad. Call of Duty has always had problems with spawning, but this game feels like it's breaking that mold. Like I thought Call of Duty World War II was Garbo spawn, but this is making me question my life. This is making me question whether or not Call of Duty even knows how FPS games work. And my hope is that maybe, just just maybe, the Activision will learn their lesson and fix this crap now. As much as I like the fact that Omni Movement wasn't too crazy, there are some times I feel like it is just too inconsistent. Yes, the running all the time makes you feel like you're sweating constantly. And if you're not in your game, you're going to definitely have some garbage ass matches. And because of the fact that the movement is so over the top with swan dives and slides and all that bullshit, the problem is the gunplay with the mixing with with these types of movements makes me have heartburn. There are times where I've seen dudes slide, dive, and just crouch and all in the same movement, and it makes me unable to hit them with a single shot. And yeah, I, I maybe I'm sounding like an old man or something, but damn, this is getting gross. And what's worse is that sometimes these guns can be crisp, but then sometimes it feels like guns are way too OP for, for no reason other than just having them be that way. Like some machine guns are fun to use, but I feel like they're just OP. And it feels like if you're not using the MP7, then what the hell are you doing? Like LMGs feel like they're a waste of space. Why would anyone want to use a light machine gun at this point? The M4 is cool, but like you wasted an entire class of weapons to make them horrible. And I'll be honest, snipers are weird. Whether you're really good at quick scoping or you just feel like you're carrying a gun that's 500 pounds. Maybe it's just me and I'm not used to this COD type of sniping skills, but I feel like I'm trash at this. And I feel like this just shows some real inconsistencies, whether it's the grenades or feeling mixed between throwing a boulder or throwing a piece of paper that guides itself on its own projectiles like throwing axes feel like they're heavy as shit or just the guns that just don't feel like they're hitting people half the time and maybe it's just a beta thing and they'll fix that later on but it was definitely something that pissed me off so the question is should you be excited about cod and you know i'll tell you one thing that when i played this beta it kind of made me feel a little bit of hope yes call of duty every year does the same thing it gives you a little bit of hype, some campaign missions that look pretty cool, an epic soundtrack with a cool trailer, and some guns that make you feel like you're going to get hyped. And then it reels you in, makes you pay $70, 
and then you find out really quick that it's just a glorified DLC. And you know, I'm still considering that as a possibility. But when playing Black Ops 6, I did notice that there was enough changes to this game that it made me feel like it actually was a title that was invested in. The Omni movement is something different. The perk system is a change up from before. And the fact that I saw all those trailers told me that, you know what, maybe they're listening to the fans and bringing back prestige and the old progression system that maybe this game can actually be solid. And if you actually own Game Pass, this is what we watched the entirety of that Law & Order fanboy edition was for. The acquisition of Activision was solely for this purpose of putting Call of Duty on Game Pass in some way. And sure, they're not going to make a lot of money this year because you're putting it on Game Pass directly, but this is a good test for Microsoft to see whether or not it's worth this strategy. And I'm happy to see that this Call of Duty seems like it's more than just a DLC. So sure, I'm excited, but I'm also a little scared. Call of Duty in the past has gotten me excited for games, and it's gotten me to pay the $70, and it's also gotten me to want to punch myself in the face. So I'm one of those people that are excited but worrisome that this could be another scam. Let's just hope that this is not just one of those standard bullshit that we get from Activision. And if this does land, then that's a good sign for Microsoft to say, you might get a boost in your Game Pass subscribers because people don't want to pay $70 for a COD game, especially if they can get it at a cheaper price. Are you excited for COD? Do you think this is going to be a glorified DLC? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, drop a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. I've covered most COD games on this channel, so go check out the most recent COD review in the end screen. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Game on.